are any guests in here, first of all, we want to welcome them. I guess it's not first, right? This is your first time here. This is our guest reception area. Uh, we will present a gift to you. We don't have any Kool-Aid or anything like that in there, trust me. Well, you can go in there, get your gift, and uh, we want to welcome you to our services. Amen. Why don't we clap our hands to him one more time? Why don't you come on and give? There's no Sunday school today. you stand to your feet if you don't feel that way won't you stand to your feet you have feet won't you stand to them 
Amen. We're going to read one verse of scripture, maybe two verses. You'll be able to be seated. I promise I won't keep you long. Book of Psalm, chapter 20, verse number one and two. Psalms, chapter 20, verse one. I'll be dropping down to verse two also. I hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving, had opportunity to spend with friends, loved ones, family, and all that, maybe strangers. Amen. Uh, we had a good time eating turkey, ham, and all the fixings. I. Uh, purposely stayed off the radar, or tried to stay off the radar, and tried to keep you off the radar. So wanted to give you all some uh, time uh, without me calling you, texting you, emailing you. But most of you should have received an email just to say Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I, I really uh, appreciate and respect family time means a lot and so uh, I wanted you to have time with whomever you choose or chose to to be with um, and as they say we didn't talk shop I didn't talk shop for the last few days um, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord here this morning so Without any further delay, uh, verse number one, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. I'm here to tell you that God is here to help you in your day of trouble. When we go through what we go through, you have a friend that stick closer than a brother. You have someone to turn to. He's not Houdini. He's not going to pull a rabbit out of the hat, so to speak. But God will hear you in the day of trouble. Verse number two. Send thee help. Where? From the sanctuary. And strengthen thee out of Zion. I want to talk to you a couple of minutes on the subject, show me the sanctuary. Show me the sanctuary. I want you to clap your hands to the Lord. You can be seated. I uh, firmly agree with David, the psalmist, the king, the prophet, the man of God who was a uh, man after God's very own heart. He, he was a man that was anointed by the prophet sent from God. He was chosen by God when he was in the sheepfold, watching the sheep, keeping the sheep. When he was just a ruddy little kid, while his brother stood above him, tall in stature, they thought that they would be the king that would be appointed by God, and no one believed that David would be. David was a, a great man. Uh, as a very young lad, uh, probably around the age of 17, I believe, anywhere between 17 and 19, he smote the giant called Goliath, and we've heard the story of Goliath, David and Goliath, and he killed Goliath, and cut his head off with Goliath's 
own sword. And there was a song that went out about David. It said Saul has killed thousands, but David has killed tens of thousands. He was a great man of God. He, he prophesied of the Christ that would come. He is looked to as the great king of all Israel. We in the New Testament, we look back at David and see this great man of God, a man after God's very heart, own heart. But David, even David, who was chosen by God and anointed by God, and God would set up a city called after David, the city of David. And when Christ came, he would be the son of David, even though he was born generations and generations and generations after the presence of David. And David was this great man, but yet he had problems. Yet he had difficulties and he had struggles. He was not one that was immune to circumstances that we face in life. He, even though he had God in his life and God spoke to him and with an audible voice and he, he had access to the throne of God and the, the temple of God, he was still a man that was subject to trouble. And David understood that when I go through times of trouble and when I'm in distresses and when difficulties are surrounding me and I need something, when I need a little help, David understood the formula for getting help. He understood the pathway for getting help. He understood where his help came from. The, the psalmist said it this way, I look my, I, I lift my eyes unto the hills yes. from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I can't rely on man. I can't rely on uh, circumstance. I can't rely on society. I can't rely on the government. I can't rely on the police department. I can't rely on the physicians and the lawyers and the professionals. I have to understand, even though I may use certain things, my help coming from the Lord. If, if I have to go to the hospital, I'm going to pray before I go there. If I have to go to the law office, I'm going to get on my knees first. My help comes from God. Everything I need comes from him. So David said, I will lift up my eyes. From whence cometh my help? I, I understand that what I need is superior than the natural life. What I need is superior than the temporal realm. Hey, some trust in horses uh, and others trust in chariots, but I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may go through difficult times and you may go through times of loneliness and depression. And difficulties, and that's just an opportunity. Yes, yes. Said that's just an opportunity not to pick up the phone yes. and to hit 911. Not the time to get on the chat line. Not the time to open up Facebook or go to Snapchat or Instagram. But it's the time to seek God and it's the time to seek his face because God will help you in the time of trouble. Psalm said, the Lord hear thee in the time and the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee, protect thee, send thee help from the sanctuary. See, you and I don't realize what we're doing here sometimes. Shanda Rahomon de la Bahasata Mahan de la Bahata Tabaha. Handarata Mahashian Rahomo Sata Baha. You see, every 
every week come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday. You don't understand everything that you face and you deal with every week. It's those moments when you come on a Sunday morning and reach that God that's not only in heaven, but he's in the sanctuary. David said, send me help from the sanctuary. When I come into the house of God, I'm just building up my army. I'm just building up my repertoire. I am calling upon the Lord. So when I go out, the angels will go out with me. Great is he that's in me. Oh, hallelujah. You don't understand what should take place in the sanctuary. Some of you are still trying to figure it out with your natural mind. Some of you have your arms folded and your head down. You don't have a revelation of the God that I serve. You don't know who's in the building. You see, that's why I lift my hands. That's why I call upon the name of the Lord. So when I call upon him, he will go out with me uh, and when I need help, uh, help cometh from the sanctuary. I said, God sends you help from the sanctuary. Oh, hallelujah. You don't know how you got through those difficult times. You don't know how you made it through those difficult moments. It's because you decided to come to the house of God. You need a revelation of the sanctuary. You need a revelation of what you're doing here. If you don't believe this, you're just wasting your time. If you don't think God shows up, you're just wasting your time. There was a rich young ruler. Well, I don't know if he was young, a ruler. He had a daughter that was sick. And he went to where Jesus was. Oh, hallelujah. You know, like I know, sometimes, I mean, you can pray all you want to at home. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's not powerful. I have intimate times or at least uh, good times as a son with God. I have great times as a son with the Father. I have great times as an individual. I'm a son of God, and I love those times with God. Come on. But Jesus said it this way. With two or three are gathered are gathered, are gathered, have decided to come together in my name, in the faith in my name, on the strength of my name, in the power of my name, there I will be in the midst of them. When you don't feel God in your bedroom, when you don't feel God in your apartment, when you don't feel God on your job, when you don't feel God doing the things that you do on a weekly basis, don't fret, don't fear, just get to the sanctuary. Oh, hallelujah. If I could just get to the sanctuary. You may not have your prayer answered on a Tuesday. You may not have things go right on a Wednesday. But look up unto the hills from whence come of your help. If I can just get into the sanctuary. I get some answers in the sanctuary. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes I don't get the answers at home by myself. Uh, but when I get into the doors uh, and I begin to lift my hands uh, and the music begin to play uh, and the people of God begin to worship uh, and the presence of God begin to fall uh, and the spirit of God begins to move, uh, something begins to happen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, but you see, it takes faith. Right, that's right. That's right. That's right. 
Can I say it this way? Some of you got it and some of you don't. But those I'm talking to, those who have some faith, God says, I'm going to meet you in the sanctuary where two or three are gathered together in my name. See, the problem is there are some people that are gathered. <laughs> they, 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 they're not gathered in the name. They just showed up in body. But some of you understand the power of the name. Some of you understand the power in the body. And God just simply does things in the congregation that he doesn't do when I'm on my own. I know some of you don't like it because I got my relationship with God. So what? All of us have a relationship with God. Well, I don't need the church. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. He said, hey, if you're not with me, you're against me. The church is his. He said, it's his body. Okay. You don't, want Je- you don't want the whole Jesus. You just want the head then. <laughs> That's all you want is the head. Well, I got news for you. The head is in heaven. But his body is right here. I want all of Jesus. And when you see the body of Christ, you're seeing Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus never touched anybody with his head. He always used his body. Oh, I don't need the church. You don't need Jesus touching you then. You need the church. Hallelujah. You don't know who showed up here. You need a revelation of what we're doing here. This is not a club. It's in the sanctuary. Your help is in the sanctuary. God sends you help from the sanctuary. You see, so, oh, hallelujah. We, see, we cry out there. We cry to God out there. We call a prayer. We complain to God out there. And then when you come in here, when God's wanting to send you help, when he's wanting to answer your prayer, You don't respond to him. That's because you don't know about the sanctuary. Show me your sanctuary. David said, send me the help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Strengthen thee out of Zion. You see, when I'm weak, Brother Alex, I need strength, and strength only comes from Zion. The word Zion is actually the hill of Jerusalem on which the city of David dwelt or was built. And so when you say Zion, you're referring to that mount, that hill, that place uh, that where, 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 where David decided, hey, this is where I'm going to set my city up. And it, beca- it became the city of David. And, and, and when you look at it in the New Testament, as far as Christianity is concerned, Zion is that heavenly city, the kingdom of God. It's also sometimes to note the church. So in the Old Testament, it was that place of Jerusalem, the hill, Mount Zion. It was the hill on which Jerusalem was built and and the word Zion means citadel which is a fortress it's a stronghold it's 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 typically a, a place on high ground 
When you're going through a battle, you need just to get on high ground, you see. And, and David set this city of God. He, he set Jerusalem. Huh? He set the place that would be called the city of the Most High, where God would place his name. He set it up on a hill. And when he said, I'm going to look unto the hill from whence cometh my help, he was saying, when I'm going through something in the valley, I'm going to look over to Jerusalem where God said he was going to be. I'm going to look towards the hills because my help comes from Jerusalem. It comes from Zion. It comes from that temple that's on the hill. And if I can just get my eyes on the sanctuary. We need to understand the sanctuary. Just show me the sanctuary. David said it like this. Oh God, Psalm 63. Thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh even. Yes. Longer for thee in a dry and a thirsty land. Here we go. And where no water is. And, and so when I'm in a dry and thirsty land, uh, when I'm out there and I don't feel anything, uh, then he went on and said to see thy power. And thy glory. God, when I'm out there, when things are dry, when I'm out there and things are weary, when I'm out there, when things aren't going right, he said, oh, God, I'm going to seek you early. I'm going to look for you. I'm going to thirst for you. My flesh is going to long for you. Why? Because I want to see thy power, and I want to see your glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. You see, you're not going to see God out there until you see him in here. You got to know where God is. And I see him in the sanctuary. And I want to see your power. And I want to see your glory when I'm out there. But I can't see it unless I see it in here first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I said, I got to see because God said, I'm going to manifest myself in the sanctuary. I'm going to show up in the sanctuary. And David said, I got to always get my eyes on the hill. You may look down. You may seem like you're defeated. You may feel deflated. You may feel insignificant. You may feel a household of shame. But I tell you what, if you can just look towards the sanctuary, get your eyes up. Look up. To whence come up your help when you're going through on a Thursday or a Friday? You ought to say to yourself, I can't wait till I get to the household of God. I can't wait. Oh, hallelujah. David said it this way in Psalms 122, verse number one. I was glad. I don't need any excuses not to come to church. I'm glad when somebody say, hey, let us go to church. Let us go to the house of the Lord. He said, I was glad when somebody said, hey, David, you're feeling down. David, you're feeling miserable. I know what they've done to you, but let us go into the house of the Lord. And David had a smile just like this. <laughs> He's all talking about it's going to be another church service. Oh, I don't feel like going to church. David was glad. I got to get to the house of the Lord. I'm just going to tell you like this. When I miss a, 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 a day from church for, for some serious reason, oh, there's my girl right there. Oh, oh yes. It seemed like some, I, I could miss a week. Oh, my goodness. It seemed like eternity. It's like, oh, my. And especially during the holidays and all that. Now, I love family time. But don't get me wrong. I, I'm not going to trade that for anything. That's why I know you snow lovers. If you like snow that much, just go to. You can't go, though. That girl love herself some snow. 
I'm like, well, that's good. I just don't like it messing up church stuff. You know what I mean? Counseling church and all that. I'm not for that. Hey, but you're just saying it because you're a preacher. I always felt that way. I hate stuff messing up church. Going to snow, doing all that other stuff, and I don't feel like shoveling and all that. And you come, I know you like shoveling. Amen. You're 20 years younger. You can do that. I used to love shoveling too. <laughs> so my back got involved. <laughs> but it's the church, folks. I'm, I'm just trying to help you. You need a revelation of why we're here. We're not just here just coming to, you know, well, I, you know to punch the clock. And, and some of you don't get anything out of coming to church. You're the same people that don't get anything out of when you go to a fine restaurant and somebody's paying your way. You don't get anything out of it because you don't open up your mouth. You don't get anything out of it because you don't reach. You go to the doctor, you don't get anything because you don't do anything. He tells you where does it hurt? What's going on? See, you got to reach. Let me take your blood pressure. Let open your mouth. Ah. Uh, you're not going to get anything. The first thing they tell you in the hospital, open your mouth. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Can't get anything just sitting around doing nothing. So when you're gathered together in his name, it's just not some silly statement. It's you're resting in the power of his name. You're believing in his name. You see, like this, he, God said, I'm going to place my name in Jerusalem, the temple. And he said, when I hear prayers in the temple, I am going to respond. I'm going to respond because this is the place I've chosen. You see, it's the church. It's the collective body. You say, well, I, I'm not saying you think I'm just talking about the building. We all can go down there to McDonald's, wherever McDonald's is. God, for, God forsaken McDonald's. I'm sorry if you work there. But that, that food got to come from Hades. I'm sorry. Well, I, I will eat the cookies and the, uh, the apple pie. And sometimes the greasy, um, what you call that thing? Uh, the greasy hash brown. After I drain about, I use a whole roll of t tissue to drain the, drain the grease first. And then I pray for about an hour, and then I can eat it. No, <laughs> no. We can all go to McDonald's and have church. And who knows? Maybe God will deliver them, and they'll have a new menu. No. That's not the whole, that's just me te teasing funny. Now, some of you feel bad. I like McDonald's. That's fine. My wife likes McDonald's. I, that's all right. You know? My point is, you can have church anywhere. Anywhere that you, oh, hallelujah, that you're seeking God. And you're having faith and believing. But this is the place God has chosen for us to come together, to gather in his name. And we need to understand that there's th there are things that happen in the sanctuary that just won't happen out there. And that's why every week you come in here, or every time you come in here, because we do meet several times a week, just to let you know. And every time you come here, when you leave out, you, go, you should leave out changed. You should leave out different. You should leave out lighter. You should leave out with another revelation, another, no, another understanding, level of understanding. Every time you come to the house of God, you say, well, it, 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 he's not taking away. The only thing he's taking away, I, I love it when I come, and it, it, we might as well just face and, and, and be truthful. You know, sometimes you come in and just, you, you know, your mind is just all messed up. When you leave out, you have peace, you have uh, hope and, and, and everything else, and you can't get that anywhere else on the planet. Amen. 
Why? Be it's not because of us. No, no flesh. It's not because of, definitely not because of me. No. It's not because of, they, they can throw down, but it's not because of the singers. And, and I, you know, the keyboard, that guy can play. It's not because of that. And the animal, good night. He can, you know, it's not because of that. It, you know, it's not entertainment. It is the presence of God. And God said, you know what? When you worship me, when you make this thing all about me and not about flesh and not about people, hey, and not about performance, not about who you think you are. It's not about religion. It's not about a program. It's about Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going to do something. And you can seek and you can find me in the sanctuary. Help comes from the sanctuary. Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 10, the queen of, uh, of Sheba, she had heard from her distant land how great Solomon was. And Solomon didn't have anything except for what God gave him. And the Bible says that, you know, she saw Solomon. She heard of Solomon's wisdom, and, and she saw the house he had built, and she looked at the meat at his table and the sitting of his servants and, and the attendants of the, of the ministers and, and the apparel and the cupbearers and all that. And then she said, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. And the scripture says there was no more spirit in her. She saw all the things in his kingdom. Everything he had amassed, naturally speaking. But it concluded with her looking at him in his ascent because it was on a hill. She saw his disposition and his attitude. I mean, he had wisdom beyond wisdom. He had apparel and everything. I mean, he, he was the richest king there ever was. He was, Midas didn't have anything on Solomon. And, and, and the Bible says she watched this guy. You know, it was almost as if he was walking all stiff and all uncool. And when he started walking in the sanctuary, he got some swag about him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And she said, I watched him ascend into the sanctuary. And my spirit left me because he, she, this woman from uh, uh, Sheba, saw everything that was done. But she saw a difference in his attitude when he went up into the sanctuary. You see, he had gold. He had riches. He had apparel. He had servants. He had everything he could ask for. But what made Solomon great was his mindset. When he went up into the sanctuary, the psalmist said, as I close with this, Psalm chapter 73, Psalm of Asaph. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such are as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. You see, when he was out there, I'm, I'm closing. When he was out there, sometimes it just, you know, sometimes, you know, you just kind of lose your footing. He said, now, on verse 1, I know God is good. I know he's good to Israel. I know that, but, verse number two says, but, anybody ever have a but in their life? <laughs> but, as for me, I know he's good to the people of God, but as for me, I almost slipped. I almost messed up, verse number three. For I was envious of the foolish. Oh, hallelujah. See, when you get out there, you can get envious of things that's going on out there and people out there, and you can try to attain what they have and what they act like they have, and, and, and you can follow the wrong thing, but God says they're foolish. He said, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, I don't care what the wicked got, I don't want to be wicked. 
Will a man gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What will a man give in exchange for his own soul? Next verse. Next verse. For there were no bands in their death. It seemed like there were, he said there were no bands in their death. I go to every funeral I go to, everybody's gone to heaven. You know what I mean? I mean, this person just committed mass murder, right? right? Killed everybody, blew everybody up, including himself. And they're going to preach. He's in a better place now. Right. So that's what saying. He said, for, there were no bands in their death. It doesn't matter whether you do evil or not, you're fine. You're going to get to heaven. That's how he looked out there. Maybe he went to one of those uh, uh, funerals out <laughs> He said, but their strength is firm. Next verse, just flow with me. Their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Sometimes it seems like everybody else is getting blessed and you're not. Yeah. Things are always going on in somebody else's life. For me, it's always something going on. See, so you see, when, you, oh, hallelujah. when you're not in the sanctuary and you're out there, sometimes it doesn't look right. Sometimes it looks skewed. Neither are they plagued like other men. Right. Next verse. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. So they got chain, you know, what you call it? They got bling now. <laughs> Prideful bling. You know, everything is going right. Right? Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, and they have more than a heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. Come on. They set their mouth against the heavens. They curse the heavens and, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither and waters are full uh, of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how doth God know? God, come on. And it's their knowledge in the most high God. I mean, is there any knowledge in him? That not, you know, everything is fine. God, God is not looking on us. Behold, these are ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. I mean, this, 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 this man, he's just going through it. Next verse. Is it stuck? All right, there we go. And he said, I've cleansed my hand in vain and washed my hands in innocency. So you know what? You know, I did all this stuff for nothing. I, I'm doing all I can do in God, and look what's happening. As soon as I try to live right, look at all these things that are going on in my life. I might as well quit. I might as well give up because everybody else doesn't have the problems that I have. You're not alone. This man felt like that also, the psalmist. All right, and go ahead. Next verse, go, to, go down to verse 16. So all that, he said, when I thought to know this, it was just too painful for me. I was on my bed just grieving. This, I mean, 16 verses, just bad stuff. Here it is, though. Next verse. Until. I, if you got a butt, hopefully you have an Until. You have a butt that says, you know what, I'm going through this. Everybody else has it good, but I don't have it good. He said, you may have a butt until I went into the sanctuary of God. Oh, hallelujah. Can I tell somebody, it may not look good out there. You may not understand things out there. Things may seem out of place out there and out of sorts out there. But when you get into the sanctuary, once you stand, then I'll get a revelation. Then I'll get an understanding. You're in the right place. Stand, please. My help comes from the sanctuary. My help comes from Zion. My help comes, amen, when I'm gathered together in his name. Can I give you this revelation? Just ask God, show me your sanctuary when I'm going through, God. As I've seen you in the sanctuary, I want to see you out there. Show me. Come on, won't you lift your hands up?
I know this is a simple message, but I'm trying to help somebody, especially over the holiday period. You're going to need this. You're going to need to find a time where you say, God, I need your sanctuary. I need your sanctuary. God, I need help that comes from your sanctuary. I'm going to look. Come on, in Jesus' name. You are the Lift your hands to him right now. Come on, all over the house. Come on, reach out to him right now. I know the world has done you wrong. I know things seem twisted and unfair. There seems to be no justice in the world, but you need to find a time where you can come to the sanctuary. Won't you begin to thank God for the house of God? Come on, reach out to him right now. Come on, in Jesus' name. Behind, no one else will do. Come on, lift your hands, close your eyes. Come on and worship. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, you can find him here. You can find him here. You can find help. Come on, Jesus' name. Come on, right now, in Jesus' name. Come on, reach out after him, right where you are. Come on, that's it. Your help is here. Your help is in the sanctuary. Come on, that's it. You want to come down to the front? You can. If you want to step out of your seat, you want to get a hold of him right where you are. Reach out after him. Come on, he's not far from anyone. I need somebody to help me pray. far from you. Come on, you need some help. Reach out after him in the sanctuary. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, he's the source. He's what you need. He's your hope. He's your peace. He's your life. He's your joy.
sanctuary. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you, Lord. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. Oh, come on. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow. All of my steps are to present ourselves to the Lord. He is leading, you know. We've heard a word from 